So uh, that brings us to number three, which I also stole from Bob Sutton, who, uh, with, with his permission, I was over in Bob's office at the D School earlier today, and Bob's got this idea that I love, that I've fully adopted, called having an attitude of wisdom. By the way, those of you who don't know Bob, he's the one on the right with the clothes on. <laughs> Anyhow, um, Bob, Bob's got this idea of an attitude of wisdom, which is a healthy balance between confidence in what you know and distrusting what you know just enough that keeps you thirsty for more knowledge. Because we've all met people in their you know, lives who they get to be an expert, right? They develop this deep expertise, and then they want to rest on their laurels. I know a lot about that. I don't need to know more, right? And I bet you've encountered some people like that in lives. And this resting on your laurels, especially with respect to learning, never a good idea. In fact, if you think about it, resting on your laurels, it wasn't even a good idea back when they had the laurel wreaths. You know, we get that from like Julius Caesar's time where something good happened, you get, to, you get to wear the wreath of laurels, right? But think about it. So Julius Caesar, case in point, right? Julius Caesar, 44 BC, he's made emperor for life, right? Imagine, that's a happy day, right? <laughs> emperor for life doesn't have a nice ring to it, right? You're not just emperor for life of Lithuania, right? You're emperor for life of the most powerful empire in the world. Right? Being a president of the U.S. is nothing like that. You know, you could, eight years, you've got to give it up, right? So he's emperor for life. He is the happiest, proudest guy in the world on that day. And he, you know what? He remained emperor for life. But his friends killed him a month later, right? And so resting on your laurels, even back then, bad idea. Can't, certainly can't do it now.